Algonquin unceded territories, Machinopsic, Machikitsu. I am a inchat, but today I feel like I'm honey gutin and I'm tsilkotin today. I'm very excited to be here with all of you. I think, chiefs, that we all feel this way. Really happy that you're you're here safely. And in my language, acknowledging that here in this beautiful Wabano facility. Please join me in thanking Wabano for opening up their doors to host this reception and the, uh, this incredible conclusion of this cross-country journey. Join me in thanking Wabano. When I was, uh, when I was a little boy, I had the privilege Chief Russ in, um, in living in your home. I remember living amongst the Tsilkoten people, experiencing a little bit of who they are, of the beauty of their lands and their territories. And I know chiefs and leaders who've traveled this great distance, for many of you, this is not your first trip. I know for some of you it's bringing back memories to sit with the, the youth as well, who've made this incredible journey. You're making history. And you're doing this trip with elders, the likes of who I just met from Hanikwitin, telling me stories of traveling in a moment when the white paper was introduced. These elders, you are the picture of the resilience and strength of our nations, standing steadfast in your identity. And it is us young people, because I was told on arrival that I looked young, so I'm just going with this for a moment, <laughs> of how much we hold you in, in regard, the elders of our nations, and in particular, the strength and resilience of the Tsilkotin elders, and as young people, all of us, that we hold them in, in high regard. And I know that you've had many stories already to tell, Cannonball Express, 25-hour <laughs> driving stretches, moments at Tsutina, in Saskatchewan at the First Nations University, at the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, being welcomed by Chief Sayers in Ontario, and concluding your journey on the eve of having the most important case in a generation in our lifetimes being heard, leaders and chiefs of Tsilkotin, Chief Roger, you and your fellow chiefs, we thank you for the courage that you've taken. I remember the moment when Chief Joe, sitting in your governance chambers, I remember the feelings that were being expressed that day. And I know that you're supported by chiefs for not only from your home region, amongst your nation, but also, as was mentioned here, the Union of BC Indian Chiefs standing steadfastly with you, Grand Chief Stuart Phillip and Chief Chamberlain, and my colleague on the National Executive, Chief Jody Wilson-Raybould. So this is where, for just ever so brief a moment, I acknowledge that, yes, I come from the west coast of British Columbia and have spent a lot of time working with you, but also learning from many of the leaders back home. It's been rec recognized by our National Executive, people of Tsilkotin and Hanikwitin, that this is the most important case that is before the country. And so as such, this is one of the most important moments in the assertion of who we are, of standing firm in our title and right. This is also a moment for the country to have its eyes and heart opened to the reality of title and rights that we have no other place to put this inheritance that we've been given, but to continue to assert it, and we will do so strongly and steadfastly. And as Jeffrey said, when these moments come together, our people come together in a unified manner. And that's what's happened in support of, of you and the Tilkotin people at this moment, as the case will be heard in court and the Assembly of First Nations will be there. We're, we're proud to be 
interveners standing with you. We're proud to stand with others who are also supporting you. And I wanted, I wanted to just share in conclusion that if we don't learn from the conflicts and the challenges of the past that we're bound to repeat them. Now we got to remember that Silk Coteen have been battling not just in the courts but have fought many battles over the course of their history. And those feelings run deep and the efforts of reconciliation have everything to do with the assertion of title and rights. And to be welcomed here in Wabano by our respected elder and respected veteran, I see the implements that are before us here, sacred implements. And on the eve of the annual acknowledgement of the sacrifice of veterans, I too join in acknowledging the Silk Coteen veterans. The battles that they fought, lives that have been lost and blood that has been shed that we as young people, we never forget. And so while it's not completely together, I too wanted to thank Tribal Chair Joe. You see I have it here. And this is a reminder. It's a reminder that the Tsilkotin have never backed down. And you're not backing down now. So as was gently reminded by our esteemed veteran, reflecting that which the sentiment he has heard, that the Tsilkotin are coming in peace. They're coming in peace, seeking a better, more respectful, harmonious relationship with this country so that they can carry out the obligations to care for the sacred waters in their territories. And there's going to be a way forward that's either going to be difficult or more difficult in our relationship with Canada. That will be the wielding of the weapons of the law instead of working on more harmonious, harmonious relationships where we share in the prosperity and work our elders' visions of caring for the land and territories and all of us prospering in a healthy way going forward can be accomplished. This is where we find ourselves at this juncture in history, is remembering that clubs were wielded because relationships broke down and conflicts ensued and here we are on the eve of once again finding ourselves in court but this time with a case that is perhaps the most important as I said in a generation. And so you're making history together here today. We're not only paying close attention, we're standing here steadfastly with you. And I'm urging Canada, I'm urging Canada to reflect on its own history, this being the 250th anniversary of the Royal Proclamation. The Royal Proclamation said, by extension, that it recognizes that Tsilkotin have land rights, the right to self-determination, a right to share in the economy and, and the wealth and resources of this land. And this is what the people here are saying. And so the way forward for this country will either be difficult one where we recognize one another, that we work to s solve the differences and settle the issues and build a more peaceful, harmonious relationship, or it will be more difficult. It will be more difficult because it will be con continue to be filled with conflict where we don't see one another, where relationships break down, and then you end up in conflict that sparks places like Elsie Bukduk being the most recent example. And so we as First Nations stand together when these moments arrive. So the Tsilkotin people, I just wanted you to know that your tribal chair for your Tsilkotin national government gave me this, but he gave it to me with a message that said, Atlio, Assembly of First Nations, don't forget. And I wanted to share with you, along with my respected uh, colleague, the Regional Chief for British Columbia, that our whole national executive stands steadfastly with all of you. Congratulations on a safe and inspiring journey across the country. And we look forward to successful outcomes in the struggle that you're engaged in because it will have implications for every single First Nations across the country. True miigwech, pleko, pleko, thank you so much.